March 2019, Rick Singer pleaded guilty to four criminal counts, including conspiracy and obstruction of justice. His guilty plea and an agreement to cooperate with prosecutors sends a signal. Well, it's it's totally shaped the scandal and it's totally given the prosecutors the ammunition they need uh, to get a number of parents and a number of people to plead guilty uh, early on. Rick Singer gave them the tapes. Several of Singer's acolytes see the writing on the wall and go down quietly. Rudy Meredith, who was the soccer coach at Yale, who was really the first coach that was uh, that was ensnared in all of this. Igor Dvorsky ran one of the testing centers, one of the testing centers that Rick Singer had basically bought and paid for. Mark Riddell was uh, the proctor for these kids' exams. Most parents have long since followed suit, but for others, wealth and privilege also afford powerful defense teams. The few remaining holdouts could still admit guilt or take their fight all the way to trial. Rich parents make donations and they're innocent until proven guilty. There's always a possibility that the parents that fight this will beat it. These payments came with the expectation that their kids would get into schools. That is a bribe. So there was a quid pro quo here, according to the U.S. Attorney's Office. Furthermore, there's a mountain of evidence to suggest that these parents knew they were trying to defraud these schools. But for parents already convicted, or others still awaiting sentencing, like Lori Loughlin and Massimo Giannulli, in the spring and summer of 2020, the coronavirus pandemic presents an unexpected possibility. Lori Loughlin agreeing to plead guilty in the college cheating scandal. Could the pandemic help her avoid prison time? Perhaps if they can cut a deal now, maybe they don't go to prison. Maybe they get home detention. Maybe there's a way that they can use this crisis to their advantage. Within days after the power couple appeared in a remote hearing from California and the safety of social isolation, more parents plead guilty. You just have to wonder if some of these parents now wish at the very outset, they had said, yes, I did this, I'll take a deal, because many of them would have already served their time by now. You know, based on the pain that he caused and the losses that he caused and the cost of the government to investigate him, I thought seven years was a justified sentence. That's not because it comes from animosity with inside me, it's justice for the victims. When it comes to restitution, Jordan Belfort's victims still don't have much to be happy about. Bob Sheeran says he has no desire to confront the man who stole more than $100,000 from him. What am I gonna go up to him and say, you know, Jordan, you owe me $130,000, would you please write me a check? I don't sit around with resentment, because then I would lose twice, you know. I lost the money. I don't need to lose peace of mind by harboring a lot of resentment about it. Since completing his parole, court records indicate that U.S. attorneys are still collecting small portions of Belfort's earnings. But feds claim that Belfort is still a long way from paying his share of the $110 million that he's been ordered to reimburse to former investors. Jordan might have you believe that he is still paying the U.S. attorney. The U.S. attorney tells me so far they've been only able to collect $12.8 million. And as far as Belfort allegedly hiding his money in secret accounts again. If you are hiding money that you owe in a federal judgment in a criminal case and you're not paying it, one would assume you could be arrested for doing that. He has not been rearrested. The wolf has stayed out of new legal trouble, but that's not the case for the power players behind Red Granite Pictures. was a rock star, literally surrounded by inmates, a gaggle of 15 or so people who thought that Bernie was the greatest thing that they'd ever encountered. People were bringing them clothes, you know, Bernie, I know that they haven't sent your money yet, but here, you know, here's some sweatpants and different type of hygiene item, toothpaste, toothbrush, stuff like that, like groupies or something. Prisoners ask Madoff for his autograph. But the former Wall Street executive refuses. A source says he's worried his signature will end up on eBay and water down his brand. 
Some inmates even ask Madoff for, of all things, stock tips and financial advice. No matter how reduced the circumstances, it seems that Bernie still likes to be in the position of advice giver, regarded as someone to go to for wise counsel, even if the people seeking the counsel are now child molesters and, and murderers. He can have people now who look up to him even in, in prison. It's probably the only environment he can be in right now uh, where people would look up to him. Uh, and the out, those of us in the outside world, no respect for Bernie at all, to say the least. March 2018, Martin Shkreli, the poster boy for pharmaceutical price gouging, appears in Brooklyn Federal Court for sentencing. After raising the judge's ire with his online antics and then getting his bail revoked, He's not acting so tough anymore. Now, we were used to seeing a very blustery Martin Shkreli, who was very macho, called the prosecutors the JV team. But when he was getting sentenced, he cried. He broke down. He pleaded with the judge, but it was too late. The judge sentences Shkreli to seven years in federal prison for securities fraud and securities fraud conspiracy. She also orders him to forfeit more than $7 million in assets including the one-of-a-kind Wu-Tang Clan album that he bought for $2 million. He's transferred to Fort Dix Correctional Institution in New Jersey, home to other white-collar criminals. Fort Dix has relatively light security, and it has more privileges for prisoners than you would see in a medium or high-level facility. When we found out that John Bravado was leaving for Italy, um, we wanted to make sure that he didn't leave the country because we were under the impression with him that he might not come back. So we did a complaint um, in order to get the arrest warrant. We planned to arrest him before he got on his flight, which was scheduled for a Tuesday, but he ended up leaving on a Sunday. All of a sudden, RJ called me and said, John's already left. It was a gosh darn it moment. <laughs> In Milan, Bravada rents an apartment, starts applying to become an Italian citizen, opens a bank account, and gets to work. John Bravada thought he could start a new fund. I assume that it was going to be the same type of fund that he wanted to start in the United States. Bravada will later say he was just there on a business trip and had no real intention of moving overseas. The feds don't buy it. On December 2nd, 2017, in the coastal town of La Ceiba, Honduras, a middle-aged Caucasian man sits down at a pizza hut for a meal of pepperoni pizza and Azteca soup. When he emerges, a masked Honduran SWAT team brandishing machine guns awaits and takes into custody one Eric Christopher Kahn. It's six months to the day after he fled. It does seem kind of an anticlimactic end after being on the run for six months to be arrested coming out of a pizza hut. Somebody said it could only have been better if it had been at a Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> Three days later, a government plane lands at Bluegrass Airport in Lexington, Kentucky. FBI agents are there to greet a frail-looking con and haul him off to finally face the music. When they brought him off the plane at the airport, he looked a little bit befuddled. Not exactly confused, but kind of bewildered. He did not look happy to be back. How's it feel to be back? Today, I'm pleased to announce that Mr. Khan is in custody. As promised, Mr. Khan will now be held accountable for his actions, the people he deceived, and the lives he shattered. Khan begins serving his 12-year prison sentence at the Grayson County Detention Center in Litchfield, Kentucky while facing new charges related to his escape. He thinks he's smarter than everybody else, and I think that was his downfall. He made a lot of mistakes as a result of thinking that nobody would ever catch him. In a letter to American Greed, Conn writes, I have always found it puzzling how anyone could think I was able to accomplish a fraud of this magnitude alone, hinting that he's got dirt to spill. 